Welcome to QViews, your number one source for quantum technology news. This week, Quantum Nation has closed its quantum technologies fund with 91 million euros. NVIDIA has released its unified quantum classical programming model, and researchers have entangled quantum memories over 33 kilometers. And the big story over at QViews today is that NIST has finally announced the winners of the post-quantum cryptography competition. Is your data secure against quantum computers? Let's see. So make sure to subscribe to this channel because we post a video every two weeks with all the latest quantum research and news in the industry and in academia. And make sure to subscribe to the Quantum Insider newsletter for even more. Today's video is brought to you by the TQI Q2 report. Quantum technology, which was one of the most hyped technologies of 2021, got a little bit of a dose of economic reality in the second quarter of 22. However, funding rounds are continuing coming to quantum technology startups, as we see in our videos every two weeks, and we see real results coming out in the hardware and the software space, both in academia and industry. And these are not slowing down anytime soon, so make sure you check out the link in the description below. On the business side of the quantum technology landscape, Quantum Nation Ventures announces the final close of its 91 million euro quantum technologies fund. This is way beyond the initial 50 million euros goal. They already have 19 portfolio companies and two exits. They've invested in the quantum computing, quantum networks, quantum sensing, and deep physics space, and have invested in spinouts from the most recognized universities all over the world. Quantum Nation will also support companies at a later stage who are raising larger financing rounds through a separate vehicle. In more quantum technology funding news, Boson Q Sai has raised $525,000 in pre-seed funding. The startup is developing the world's first quantum-powered engineering simulation software to help industry players accelerate time to market. BQP is currently carrying out pilots with global automotive, aerospace, and manufacturing companies. With this funding, the team hopes to launch their product next year and release alpha and beta versions later this year. On the research side, we're seeing new quantum research in biological sensing and quantum networks, as well as a release of NVIDIA Quota, which is going to be helping researchers study hybrid classical quantum algorithms. First, a team of researchers have reported that they have entangled two quantum memories across 33 kilometers fiber optics, a new record and an important step to the new quantum internet. This study was recently published in Nature, and this is the longest distance so far that anyone has ever managed entanglement via telecom fiber. NVIDIA has released its unified computing platform, meant to help support research and development in quantum technologies and near-term quantum applications like AI, machine learning, finance, and health. The NVIDIA Quantum Optimized Device Architecture, or QUOTA, aims to make quantum computing more accessible by creating a coherent hybrid quantum classical programming model. While the platform isn't fully available yet, you can go to their website and apply for early interest, so I really hope we get access soon. At the Q2B conference in Tokyo, NVIDIA announced QUOTA collaborations with quantum hardware providers IQM Quantum Computers, Pascal, Quantinium, Quantum Brilliance, and Xanadu, and software providers QCWare and Zapata Computing. While the platform isn't fully available yet, you can apply for early interest on their website. So let's hope it's released soon because I'm excited to see what kind of connections we can make. In quantum sensing news, MIT engineers are reporting on advances in nanoscale detection, potentially being able to boost quantum computing or even biological sensing. Quantum sensors, which detect tiny variations in magnetic or electrical fields, have helped get precision measurements in material science and fundamental physics. But the problem is, is that these sensors can only detect a few specific frequencies of these fields, thus limiting their usefulness. So they've developed a method to allow these sensors to sense any arbitrary frequency, with no loss of their ability to measure nanoscale features. The system may open up new applications in biomedical fields because it can make use of frequencies at the level of a single cell, which is currently very difficult. And finally, as we're going to discuss a little bit later in our big story on NIST finally releasing the post-quantum cryptography finalists, CryptoQuantique announces the first post-quantum computing IoT security platform compliant with these new NIST security standards. QuarkLink is a platform for connecting IoT devices, including device provisioning, automated secure onboarding to applications, and lifetime security management. It uses the new approved algorithm Crystal's Kyber to secure its IoT platform, and is believed to be the first one compliant with NIST post-quantum security standards. 
CryptoQuantique's protocol is designed to be flexible and easily adapted to changing standards, which is why they're able to upgrade so fast and is great for this post-quantum future. In-person events are coming back, and that's also true in the quantum technology space. Qnesis and QCWare co-host the inaugural Q2B22 Tokyo. This event, held on July 13th and 14th, brought together top academics, industry end users, government representatives, and quantum computing vendors from around the world. Remember, you can go on the Quantum Insider website to see even more quantum technology events. The big story at QViews today is that NIST has finally released the winners of the post-quantum cryptography competition, meaning that they have released four algorithms that hopefully will withstand attacks from quantum computers. This was a six-year effort and called upon researchers from all over the world to create and vet new encryption methods that will stand up to quantum computing attacks. And even as early as a few months ago, some of these encryption algorithms in the competition have been broken by not only quantum systems, but classical systems. For general encryption, NIST has selected the Crystal's Kyber algorithm. For digital signatures, NIST has selected three algorithms, Crystal's Dilithium, Falcon, and Sphinx Plus. Sphinx Plus uses hash functions, however, the other three use structured lattices. I'll provide you some links below that talks a little bit more about post-quantum cryptography, but remember, post-quantum cryptography are classical computing methods, not quantum methods, that enable secure communication and they stand up to quantum computing attacks. There are also four algorithms that are still under consideration. If you watched some of our last videos, you know that the government has already been trying to get people to start thinking about post-quantum security. And I anticipate these requirements now that NIST has released them. That timeline is going to accelerate really quickly, so we're going to see a lot of movement in the post-quantum security space. And probably it will start with government and then move into industry, so make sure to keep an eye on this space. Thanks for joining us today over at QViews. Now, based on user feedback, we've redesigned the Quantum Insider website to make it much easier for you to browse quantum computing articles and get all the data you need on quantum research, quantum technologies, and quantum events. So make sure you check out the new website and join me over here every two weeks on QViews. See you next time.